Hey, what's up? Welcome back. It's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. And it's 2021. 2020 has been absolutely crazy. And even with just 10 days into the new year, already so much has happened. I don't know how, how it is for you, but for me, it definitely feels like the world is a bit too crazy out there right now. And I think it's worth just coming back to focusing on what's right in front of us, you know, like simple things, the people around us, the things we're currently working on, and let the craziness out there just play itself out, you know, we're not making our lives any easier by just focusing on all that stuff all the time. So let's get back to talking about acoustics. And the first question that I want to talk about this year is a simple one. Let's start simple. And that is, if you're placing acoustic panels around your room, should you place them, hang them horizontally or should you hang them vertically? Is there like an advantage to either one? Is there is, is one better than the other for some reason? And to be honest, the answer is just as simple as the question. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter. The, um, the way you place your panel isn't gonna move the needle in the, in the grand scheme of treating your room, right? So you could make an argument for hanging your panels horizontally because obviously ultimately while we're mixing, we're probably moving side to side, we're moving front to back, but we're not really like standing up and sitting down all the time, right? And so if you, if you place your panel horizontally along your walls, then you'll probably cover more of the kind of typical areas where reflections might happen as you move around. But ultimately, this isn't going to do much for you. It isn't going to change much for you. What really matters is how many panels in total you put in your room, right? So how much surface area you're actually covering with absorption, for example. That's what's actually going to move the needle in terms of getting better sound in your studio. Whether that panel is vertical or horizontally, it doesn't really matter. Of course, if you look at it in more detail, we probably have to look at if there are bigger gaps or how big or how wide gaps are between panels that you put up, right? So higher frequencies with shorter wavelengths will still find their way to the flat surface between the panels and get reflected and cause all the issues that reflections cause. But again, this is not really moving the needle in terms of the big picture. So I, for example, tend to now just hang panels vertical if I'm putting them on the wall, right? And the reason is pretty practical. The first one is that it's much easier to, I find at least, to hang a panel vertically to mount the panel on the wall. I can also usually fit more panels on a given surface area, right? And that's what's gonna make the difference for me. And then just purely aesthetically, I kind of think it just looks better when the panels hang vertically. Right, so if you're faced with that question, you've got a few panels and you're wondering kind of what the optimum placement would be and in which orientation you should place your panel, just remember that what you really want to focus on are things that move the needle, right? So first of all, getting started. Just if you don't get started, nothing's going to change, right? And then things like finding the optimal listening position in your room and then ultimately when you do treatment, it's more about how much surface area you're actually covering with those panels rather than which exact orientation you use where. Of course, if you're still stuck deciding on which type of absorber, which type of bass trap is right for your room, remember that I've got a complete guide to bass traps for you that you can download for free at the link in the description. And it's basically a a summary or a, an encyclopedia list, if you will, of all the different types of bass traps out there, both for DIY purposes and that you can buy off the shelf. So obviously standard porous bass traps, broadband bass traps absorbers, but also all the different types of resonance absorbers. So Helmholtz resonators and membrane traps and perforated sheet absorbers and all of those. And it's basically a quick summary of how they work, how you can identify what they actually look like. So when you're looking at a product online, you can figure out what it is and what it's what it's supposed to do. And then also how to use it in your room, how many you would need, how to place it. It's all summarized there in one document for you. So you can really have a, 
a proper comparison between all the different types of absorbers, base traps out there, and which one is right for your room, right? So if you're still unsure about what's right for you, make sure you download my complete guide to base traps in the link in the description. So that's it for now for this first video of 2021. I hope that answered your question and I'll see you in the next video.